Shamans from around the world have begun to gather as the Burning Legion invades Azeroth. From their new base of operations beside the Maelstrom at the heart of Azeroth, the Earthen Ring have sent heroes to locate powerful artifacts to help in the coming war. Three powerful artifacts were tracked down, each rich in history. Doomhammer for Enhancement Shamans, the Fist of Raden for Elemental, and Sharastal, Scepter of the Tides for Restoration. They drifted into the Abyss, but Ashara and her Highborn remained unbroken. The darkness around them was absolute, and so the Queen willed Sharastal to bring them light. As the ocean crushed the life from their bodies, ancient creatures stirred in the darkness. Their whispers flowed through the currents, their powers wrapped tight around the Queen and her servants. Many thousands of years ago, the Night Elves began to build a civilization around the potent Well of Eternity. They raised themselves to prominence, eventually dominating the ancient landmass of Kalimdor. The Eminent Highborn stood at the center of the Night Elves, and at their head, the Queen Ashara, beautiful, powerful, and loved by her subjects. On her coronation day, Ashara received many gifts. Arguably the most valuable was the gift given by Lord Savius. Savius suggested the Queen keep the scepter close, and it would bring her prosperity. As a highborn and a powerful arcane mage, Ashara was fascinated with the Well of Eternity and its secrets. She studied the well, strived to unravel its secrets. She infused a drop of the well into her scepter, expanding upon the powers it already held. Soon, Ashara found the powers her scepter now contained gave her command over water and sea, ocean and river, and even over her own life essence. She could control aquatic beings, and even alter her appearance. She used the scepter to make herself even more enchantingly beautiful than she already was. Pleased with these new abilities, she named the scepter Sharistal, Scepter of the Tides. Under Ashara's guiding hands, the Night Elven civilization blossomed and flourished. She used her scepter to surround and infuse the Grand Temple of Lothar Lazal with waters from around the world, teeming with fish, and even a sea giant which she could command using the powers of her scepter. Lothar Lazal was among the wonders of this growing empire, and as the empire grew, so did Ashara's influence, as well as her obsession with the Well of Eternity. She plumbed deeper and deeper into the well's secrets, using her scepter to manipulate its waters. Her highborn, too, spent much time with the well's powers, experimenting with its potential. Their experiments grew bolder and more powerful, and eventually, waves of their magics crashed through the Twisting Nether and caught the attention of Sargeras and the Burning Legion. Sargeras made contact with Ashara and promised her great power, power that could lead to the paradise Ashara dreamed of. In return, all she had to do was open a portal to allow the Legion through onto Azeroth. Ashara and her highborn court put together all the knowledge and skill they had acquired over the decades, and used the well to open a portal. Sherestal was likely used to help gather the energies for such a spell. Soon, demons poured through the portal and began their conquest of Azeroth. The War of the Ancients had begun. The war dragged on for some time, and through it all, Ashar continued to force the portal larger and larger. More powerful demons stepped through. When it seemed as though Sargeras himself would be able to step foot onto Azeroth, the efforts of the Night Elven Resistance succeeded. The sorcerers were stopped, the portal collapsed, and the Well of Eternity exploded in spectacular fashion. The face of Azeroth was sundered. Ashara and many of her highborn watched the catastrophe from the palace at the well's shores. Waves came crashing in from the ocean, filling the massive hole left by the well. Ashara used her scepter to protect her people from the waves, and soon they were sucked deep into the waters. Swallowed by the water, Ashara used the scepter to bring light and warmth to the trapped highborn, but the scepter could not save them from drowning. Water filled their lungs, and for a time, it seemed they would die in the depths, Ashara's powers over the water failing them. Whispers reached them then, and their bodies were made anew. Gills formed, scales grew across their skins, in the shadows of the deep seas, the highborn were morphed into the hateful Naga. The old gods had touched them, tainted them, and saved them. Ashara set to work rebuilding her empire. Najjatar stood as its capital, a mighty city at the depths of the ocean. It is suspected that the queen and her people served the old gods that changed them. Ashara's sea witches bring Ashara's wrath wherever they go. Sometimes, they wielded Sharistal as Ashara had commanding the tides and the creatures of the sea. They exerted their dominance over the sea giants, 
and expanded their empire, seeking to grow it above and beyond the mighty empire the Night Elves had once commanded. For 10,000 years, the scepter was used as a tool for the Naga, until one day, at the Throne of the Tides, the Sea Witch holding the scepter was confronted by a group of shamans looking to take the scepter and use it in the war against the Burning Legion.